It is the fifth time since 2002 that Eurofound has invited high-level decision makers from all over Europe to come to Dublin Castle to debate the way forward in the area of social and work-related policies. On every occasion, we have counted with the very good cooperation of the Irish government. And we are very grateful for this commitment, particularly in this year, which marks 40 years of Irish membership of the European Union and the seventh time that Ireland holds the presidency of the Council of the Union. And Ireland reflects to a large degree the goals of a union of solidarity, cohesion, and development. I came to Ireland for the first time when I was 14 years old, so some time ago, almost 35 years ago, and I recall a very different country from the one I found when I, have, when I came later as director of Eurofound. 40 years of EU membership has contributed to creating a confident country with vastly improved standards of living. And I could draw a very similar picture about my own country, Spain. The improvement of living and working conditions and their harmonization at a high level have been the vital goals of the European integration from the very start. Together with peace in Europe and the strengthening of democracy throughout the continent. We can be proud of what we, ha of what we have achieved. Europe is still a great place to live. And despite of the deep crisis, citizens' satisfaction still remains high in Europe. Europe compares well with many other development, developed economies, remains a magnet for the less fortunate in other parts of the world, and performs very well in terms of social development. This does not mean, obviously, that all is well. There are weaknesses within the structure of the Union and within the member states themselves. And we face a constant challenge, the need to change, to adapt, and to get better, arising from the fact that we are competing in a globalized and complex world. Can we remain fully committed to our social model while at the same time being among the most competitive economies in the world? At the Foundation Forum, we have discussed this question more than once. Does globalization challenge the European social model? Are social Europe and competitive Europe partners or rivals? Can we combine growth and solidarity? Or is there a trade-off between being fair and being competitive? The economic situation has placed these questions under the spotlight even more clearly. The crisis has wiped out years of economic and social progress in Europe. It has widened inequalities within some member states and weakened cohesion between them. Many indicators and recent Eurofound research provides fresh evidence on just how much the crisis has impacted on the life of Europeans. Firstly, and most obviously, in terms of jobs. 26 million people are currently unemployed in Europe, a figure that we cannot afford. According to Eurofound's analysis, the highest and the lowest paid jobs have performed well even during the crisis, <coughs> while the deepest job loss has been concentrated in the middle, mainly in manufacturing and construction, therefore showing a sort of polarization. And surprisingly, among workers who are in employment, an increasing number are concerned that they may no longer have a job in six months' time. This deterioration in the economic and labor market situation in many member states is reflected in the results of Eurofound's most recent survey. 
Europe's citizens are feeling less optimistic about the future, according to the third European Quality of Life Survey. In some countries, 20% report difficulties in making ends meet. And trust in key public institutions has dropped, showing dramatically low levels in some member states, even as low as two out of 10 in some countries. These results seem to show that Europe is struggling to deliver on its key commitment to improve living and working conditions for all. Support for European integration is weakening as citizens question the value of the European Union for themselves. In the search for answers, <laughs> policymakers focus on economics. Europe needs to return to growth. Stable financial markets are required, and that calls for fiscal consolidation. But the dilemma is not about an intrinsic contradiction between fiscal consolidation and social policies. The question is how to get out of the crisis and to create jobs. And this may require a certain level of fiscal expansion. But can all member states afford this? To what extent do they have the capacity within the requirements of fiscal discipline? How can we cope with shocks that affect member states in a very different way? particularly if resources are scarce or, as the chair of our governing board likes to put it, if there are no more cookies in the cookie jar. And this is exactly where the European Union and the member states are challenged to deliver on the promise of a job-rich recovery, spelling out what can be done in the social and employment area. It is true that huge progress has been made in European economic and monetary integration in recent times. A social pillar must complement this process. The need for a coordinated approach to creating jobs and dynamic labor markets and the development of youth guarantee schemes are part of the European Commission's most recent initiatives. A more ambitious debate has started including ideas for stabilizers that could deal with asymmetric shocks, proposals for a new level and employment scheme and for youth employment initiatives have been put on the Commission and Council agendas. The search is on for social and employment policies that can deliver both a competitive and a fair Europe. Foundation Forum offers want to offer a platform for this key debate about the options available and the choices facing Europe. Even if we share the same objective, there are always very different ways of achieving it. There are examples where the two elements have been successfully combined. The Nordic countries, Austria, Germany, maybe others, indeed, they have extensive social models that they have been reformed, but they have shown also to be both compatible with sound public finances and with high levels of competitiveness. Inspiration can also be found outside of Europe. The ILO and the World Bank have been invited to share experiences, for example, from the fast growing economies in Latin America even if substantial problems remain and, of course, need to be addressed, growth and solidarity have progressed together to some extent in a number of these countries. A good debate should be based on evidence. We will therefore start with the first session presenting facts and figures for setting the scene. These figures confirm that Europe has high levels of spending on social policy. It is very unlikely that more money will be allocated in the current economic circumstances. This means that we have to do more, that we have to do better 
with the limited resources available. How this can be done is the big question also for this conference. One thing, however, is clear. Inaction is not an option. Take the example of the needs. Young people who are not in employment, education, or training, especially in recession. The cost is huge and immediate. And it is clear that investment today would reduce the need for other social expenditure tomorrow. Inaction clearly comes with a high price. We have to ask ourselves, under what conditions will the money that we spend on social policy today bring returns in the future? The European Commission will be launching next week a social investment package, and we expect Commissioner Andor, as well as other colleagues of the European Commission participating in the event, to outline some key elements of this initiative. It is about smarter ways of spending public money and smart reforms to ensure that our social models deliver even better results in the future in the most effective and efficient way. The crisis has been seen as an opportunity for reform, a chance to make things better. But let us not forget that the crisis puts an enormous burden on citizens, a burden that has to be shared. A fair Europe requires solidarity and the willingness to assist and protect those who are most vulnerable in our societies. We need to reflect on how we can move towards solidarity in living and working conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, a Spanish philosopher, Julian Marias, once remarked that even though everyone is wondering what is going to happen, few people are questioning what they themselves can do. How to build a fair and competitive Europe is not a debate confined to the meeting rooms in Brussels of the Berlemont or the European Parliament. All actors in the EU institutions, in governments at different levels, in social partners organizations, and in the broader society must get involved in the debate, but also in the implementation of the solutions. A key element of the European social model is social partnership. And there's no doubt that social partnership can have an important role in finding fair and productive solutions. This is why the Foundation puts much emphasis on exploring the views of all actors, particularly the social partners organizations, and invites them to share their experience in defining social and employment policies at different levels. The forum provides an opportunity to exchange and debate what is available, what has worked, what is planned. Given the state of public finances, we are likely to look for many, perhaps sometimes small, innovative solutions. These social innovations must be based on evidence-based policy making, something that Eurofound is committed to support through our recently adopted four-year program. And though I don't want to downplay the importance of policy-relevant knowledge, I do want to end by quoting Albert Einstein, who said that in times of crisis, only imagination is more relevant than knowledge. And I would like to invite you to apply your knowledge, but also to let your imagination flow and enrich our debate here in Dublin Castle with your bold ideas, your imaginative suggestions, and your creative solutions. Thank you very much.